As shown, all processes offer a new instance arrow, apply box, documentation link, and reset, except for a few, such as crop and background extraction, which use what's called the dynamic mode. These have a green check mark to execute rather than apply, and they can't be closed unless they are canceled with this red X. Those tools designed for batch processing display this apply global icon. Lastly, some feature this convenient icon for real-time previews. Before we address those, let's cover standard previews. Recall that we created one in PI2. You can also do that by choosing Alt-N and defining a region by dragging the cursor. Tabbing over to that preview, we can set a zoom level and a position. And after copying this preview, you can replicate the view by dragging this tab to that one. Imagine how easy it is to compare different results in identical close-ups. You can also drag a preview to another image. There are times when we'll want to combine previews. Visiting scripts for the first time, here's the preview aggregator, and we'll see it in action soon. To apply a process to a preview, drag its NI to the preview and not the image itself. Some processes can't be applied to a preview, but most can, and once it's been done, the Undo Preview, Redo Preview button appears. Rather than use these arrows, we use this one. You can use this button to delete an active preview or choose Delete All in the menu. Real-time previews are different and are offered by a few processes such as the histogram transformation tool we used in PI3. Clicking here opens a new window and so long as this stays depressed, the link between the process and the preview remains live. Watch what happens as we do a non-linear stretch. The preview provides a good albeit imperfect reflection of what the change would do to the image itself. This eliminates the need for creating multiple previews to experiment with processes. You can even choose to view individual channels here. We're going to take our first look at masks in a moment, but for now, Note that when a mask is applied to an image, we can choose to incorporate it into the real-time preview or have it ignored. As with any window, we can expand or close it, but with an RT preview, we can't zoom in any closer. Pixinsight's masks are a powerful way to apply selective adjustments. We've talked about the different elements of an astro image in other series. Masks allow us to pay individual attention to stars or background sky and other noisy areas or the better signal of our target objects. We can create masks akin to reveal, conceal, threshold, and inverted masks, but we don't paint them. In Pixinsight, we'll define three basic types. The luminance mask, range mask, and star mask. Masks can then be altered by wavelets, histogram transformation, the clone stamp, and pixel math, all of which we'll see in action. But for now, let's do an intro to masks. For a luminance mask, simply duplicate the image. If it's an RGB rather than a grayscale image, extract the lightness component via channel extraction 
or this handy icon. You'll then need to take the mask nonlinear via histogram transformation. Rather than doing a safe stretch, consider a simple improvement. As masks employ the white reveals, black conceals mantra, making blacks blacker and whites whiter will increase its efficiency. Later we'll see how to feather masks for smooth transitions. Once created, we can shade or minimize it like so. As any image can act as a mask, it becomes available for selection here. And also offered is the ability to invert the mask depending on what we're trying to accomplish. Clicking OK makes the mask visible, as seen in red. You can change that overlay color here. This mask would allow adjustments to the brightest highlights, while protecting everything else. We can remove the mask here, or invert it, even if we didn't choose that beforehand. And this is very important. Be sure Enable is selected when you want the mask in play. When you don't, simply disable it. Lastly, though it remains active, you can hide the mask. The mask interface just takes a little time to get comfortable with. Next up, more masks.